I will be there. I mean, not she told you, Jim. Bismillah, Rahman, you know. I welcome you all to our first contact on the e-learning class. Uh, my name still remains Adia Latifat of Atubosu. Now, the first, we are going to revise the mock examination we did last term. And uh, you, as you all know, it is in three sections. But the first part we are going to look at is your practical section. Well, you all tried, but your performance is still not what I expected. And the area in which in class I've been laying emphasis on that you should note when you are answering practical questions, you are still making a lot of errors in those areas. So I will implore you all to now listen attentively once again, in order to avoid those errors when we are writing our final exam, either for WAEC or NECO. So the first question in that practical section is classify specimen A, B, C, D, E, and F in the table below. For our benefit, those specimens I presented during that practical section are the one that I've highlighted on the board here. Uh, which runs from A to N. So we are now asking question one to classify specimen A to F in the table below here into the fruit class, the leafy vegetable, the bulb, and the root. So in our previous class on vegetable crops, we have been able to identify these groups of vegetable. And so where you now make the error when you are asking this particular question. Instead of us to so put the name of the specimen on the table, that is tomato. Tomato is a fruit vegetable. Tomato here, some of us, what we did is to put specimen A. And I said, I know, and I know why you, some of you made that error is that, I said we should place marks by not mentioning the name of the specimen when we have been asked questions on that particular specimen. But if you have been attentive enough, you will remember that I'm not saying with this type of question. Where I made such a clarification is, for instance, you are asked to identify a particular specimen. Let's take, for instance, this tomato. In the subsequent question on that, that particular specimen, you are now asked to give what are characteristics, uses, or as the case may be, of that particular specimen. Why I said in the subsequent specimen you should play safe by not mentioning the name of the specimen is that you might have identified wrongly in the first question. So by the time you now get to the second question, you, cannot, you don't keep on mentioning the name of the specimen you have identified wrongly. Because you may be lucky that the point you are raising is also similar to the specimen you have identified wrongly. But once you do not mention the name of the specimen, you are safe. But not in this type of question where they want you to specifically classify each of these specimens. So with specimen A now, it belongs to the fruit class. Specimen B, Amaranthus. So we come to the living column and put Amaranthus there because it's a living vegetable. Specimen C is also a living vegetable. You will start it there. D, okra. Okra also belongs to the fruit, I mean fruit class. So you will start it there. And then onion. Onion belongs to the bulb. Uh, group. So you put the onion here. And the, the last one is carrot. Carrot, it is a root vegetable. And that you are done. But what most of you did, you just put specimen A, specimen D, specimen D inside the table, which is not allowed for this type of question. I hope it's clear now. Then going to specimen B. Specimen B, where some of you also made an error, is that I told you, practical
Technical questions are very easy to get. But try and force understand what the question wants from you. This question is saying five general, general cultural practices that are common to all these crops we have classified in the first question. And those general cultural practices are those, some of the cultural practices we all know, like weeding, fertilizer application, shading, watering, uh, control of pests, control of diseases, are uh, general cultural practices for all these crops. But I have some of you who mentioned staking. Staking is a cultural practice, but it's not a general cultural practice to all these crops we have classified here. And that's why I said, understand the question very well before you begin to answer. Now, we we'll go ahead to question, the C section of question one. State, the question state says, state for importance of specimens A, B, C, D, E, and F. What importance do we derive from all these specimens? And there are so many of those importance we can highlight here. For all of them, we know that a vegetable crop will get an essential nutrient from it, that is vitamin. So, by saying that it provides vitamins, it's a good point that you can raise here. It is a source of employment. As a farmer, you are employed. It is a source of income to the farmer. Some of the farmers sell these crops and earn their living from it. It is a source of revenue to the government. Some of them can be exports. So the government earn their own revenue from the exporting of some of these crops here. Some of them have medicinal value. Even I, we can even say all of them has medicinal value that we can use to treat one ailment or one diseases or the other. And these are importance, some of the importance we can derive from this group of specimen. Now, question, we will now go ahead to look at question 2A, which states that step three uses each of specimen G, H, and I. And our G, H, to I are red, ax, and the sickle. But there is problem here also in identifying properly these specimens. So I brought back to class those specimens. G is a rake. This is the rake. I is sickle. This is sickle. But because this person does not ask us to identify, he starts with asking us to state the uses of each of these specimens. So some of the response I'm gotten from some of you has to do with harvesting knife. And this way, the first explanation I gave about you playing safe when you are asking practical questions comes in now. Because some of you does not identify the specimen well. You keep on answering this particular question, which is on red and ax. Some identify the red correctly. No problem with red. But when I go to sickle, instead of specimen uh, I is used for this, specimen I is used for that. They keep on mentioning harvesting knife is used for this, harvesting knife is used for that. Even though some of those uses are similar, but since you keep on mentioning harvesting knife and the specimen you are presented with, you are, you are presented for, is not harvesting knife, so you'll be marked down. So try as much as possible to note this area I'm laying much emphasis on. Now, we will now begin. Step three uses of specimen G, which is rake. We are familiar with rake. And I don't have any problem with any one of you stating the uses. The uses again. The rake can be used to remove debris or trash on the farm. It can be used to level the soil on the farm. It can be used to drag out stones 
or nursery beds. It can be used also to cover up seed after broadcasting. These are uses of our rake. Now, going to H, which is ax. Now, we have problem also here. Some of you cannot identify the ax. Some say matos is used for this. Some say pick ax is used for this. Some say uh, digger is used for this. But we are looking at this. They don't have the same structure. Now, for digger, it will not be a flat edge like this. It is a pointed edge the digger has. The pick has is double edges it has. It's like, it has like an axe somewhere in the first part and like a, a, a narrow um, hole at the other side. So what I presented you with is an axe. Now, what are the uses of an axe? The axe is used for felling trees. The axe is, is used for removing uh, root stops. The axe is used for splitting woods. These are uses of the axe. Now, uh, I, which is sequel. There is also a problem identifying sequel. Sequel has a short handle. This is harvesting knife. What was presented to you during the practical section is sequel and not harvesting knife. If you can, as you can see, this harvesting knife has a longer wooden handle. And is, even though they, are, they both have a curved metal blade, but with the harvesting knife, you can see the other small metal blade at, this, at the blunt end of the curved part of the harvesting knife. So it is not harvesting knife that was presented to you. And some people answering this question, saying harvesting knife is used for this, harvesting knife is used for that. And those uses of harvesting knives are, one, we can use it to harvest uh, cereals or fruits. Now, note here again. I said some of you will have write a lot of points thinking that uh, you have impressed your marker knowing that you only get few marks out of all your points that you have raised. I said it is used for harvesting cereal or fruit crop. Now, some of you, you will now write point number one. It is used for harvesting cereals or harvesting crop. Point two, it is used for harvesting uh, orange. It's used for harvesting mango, point number three. All these ones you have raised, you are still talking about the same thing, which is, it is used for harvesting of cereal crop or harvesting of fruit. So be mindful of duplicating your points, thinking you are raising different types of points. So the second one, it is also used to harvest pasture grasses for our livestock animals. And it's also used to carry out uh, weeding uh, on the uh, vegetable uh, uh, beds. So these are the uses of our what? Our sequel. As you can see now, harvesting knife, if you have been smart enough and not start mentioning harvesting knife, harvesting knife is also used for harvesting cereals or, I mean, for harvesting fruit crops and some other crops on the farm. So play safe by not mentioning the name of that particular specimen in this type of questions. Now, we go to the big part of the question two. Step two maintenance for each of specimen H and I, which require you to stay two points for specimen H, which is X, two points for specimen I, which is C. And what are these uh, maintenance for each of them? For the, for the X, the X, as you, if you have identified well, it has a wooden handle. So begin your maintenance um, practices you identify by looking at that specimen very well. Since you don't need to cram anything, since you know it has a wooden handle, it means that one of those points you can raise is that you protect the wooden handle against termite attack. Either 
by oiling or by painting it. Now, the, you can also see that it has a metallic part. This metallic part can also be protected. But once you cannot, can also be protected by saying that you also protect the metallic parts from rusting by oiling or by greasing. Now, the use of this ass is to cut. Most of those things it's doing is cutting. And it must have, it has a blade part, which must be very sharp. And you can only also maintain this specimen by stating that sharp the, uh, the edges when it is blunt, because that is the most useful part of this particular specimen. Like that, we have been able to mention some of those maintenance for this particular specimen. Then we use sickle. See no problem with it. We also protect the wooden handle against termite attack. Protect the metallic parts and sharpen the curved inner blade when it is blunt. Because it's the inner part of this particular specimen that will carry out the cutting here, not the outer edges. The outer one is usually blunt. So protect the wooden handle from termite attack. Protect the metallic part also from rusting. Sharpen the inner curved end when it is blunt. And to each of these specimens, specimen uh, H and I, they also share some maintenance practices in common. Clean after use. Store in a cool, dry place. It is common to the two specimen as well. And that we are done with question 2A. I mean question 2B. And the last part of question 2 is asking us to des describe specimen uh, G, which is the ray. Also here yeah, there are some things I've been correcting all along the way. Let's first describe. Specimen G has a long wooden handle. It has a metal blade. It has several prongs. I've always been laying emphasis on this. Don't identify this part, part as he has several mouths, or he has several nose, or he has several head, as we have always been describing it. I said the correct vocabulary for, for these particular structures, the way this metal blade part are cut into small, small pieces like this, with a sharp end, is what we call prongs. And if you, if you are familiar with other similar uh, simple farm tools that share the same resemblance as this, like the garden fork, like the manual drag, the uh, root, uh, um, uh, the root uh, loading uh, fork, all this has this type of uh, a metal part at the edge, which we refer to as the prong. So, so okay. inshallah now, we will go ahead to look at question three. And the A pass requires us to state the main nutrients obtainable from specimen J and K. And here we have specimen J and K to be bone meal and cat fish. The major nutrient in specimen J, which is bone meal, is nothing else calcium. But you can get the mark if you also just mention mineral. Is that you state that it contains mineral nutrients or you are specific about the type of mineral, which is calcium. Then for specimen K, catfish. Catfish, also, the major nutrient in catfish will either be protein or fat and oil. Any of these points you state is also correct because it contains those two type of nutrients. Now the B part, and majority of you got that question right, and the B part now asking us, state three functions, each for nutrients obtainable 
for specimens J and K. We have said that specimen J contain calcium. And that's why here, the point you will raise here should not be general about all minerals. Because the, the different types of mineral has their specific functions. But the type of mineral uh, that is contained in the bone meal is calcium. And what are the uh, importance of calcium as we have been as we have been taught in our class on animal nutrition. The function of calcium is one, is for strong bone and teeth. Two, for strong eggshell egg formation. And calcium is also essential for blood clotting. Any of these points you raise is correct. Then for catfish, it now depends whether you question the A part, you have, you have stated that it is protein. What we want to look at is the function of the protein because the major nutrient you, had, you have identified in the first question is protein. You don't jump from identifying that the major in, nutrient in specimen K is protein. And now come down and spy with the next person beside you who has identified that the major nutrient is fat and oil and you begin to state the function of fat and oil, it may not be marked. Now, if you have stated that the major nutrient is protein, so what are the importance of protein in the body of the farm animal? As we have, we have identified also in that nutrition class, one, it is, it is used for building up of new body tissues and cell, for repair of worn out tissues, for the production of enzymes and hormone, for the production of protective covering of the animals. And what are these protective covering? We have mentioned the skin, the feather, the hooves, the fur, the nails, and so on. These are protective covering of the farm animal. That protein is essential to build up. Now, these are some of the important. We also said it is also used for the production of vaccines and many other points that we have looked at when we look at those importance of the uh, each class of the nutrients. Now. But if what you have identified in A is fat and oil, it will require you when you get to B part to state the function of fat and oil. And what are some of the function of fat and oil? We said it's a source of uh, energy too. We, we also said it is used to con conserve body heat in the farm animal. We also identify that it helps to improve the, the palatability of the animal diet. It is also a good source of our fatty acid. We also identified then in that class that it is also a carrier of fat soluble vitamins. Before, because if you remember, we said it is in the presence of fat that we can get fat soluble vitamins. They can only dissolve. The fat soluble vitamins will only dissolve in fatty substances. And these are the function of fat and oil. If you have stated that the major nutrient it contains is fat and oil. So the two nutrients it contains is either it contains the two, but here you are asked to state one, the major nutrient. You can state as protein or fat and oil. But if in another question they ask you, say to nutrient contained in catfish or fish generally. It's just that catfish is the one presented to you. It will contain those two essential uh, nutrients. So we'll go ahead to the, uh, the sea part. Stay three farm animals from which specimen J will be obtained. There is no problem here. All the, all the our farm animals will give us the, their bone. We can process it all what we call the bone meal. So mentioning animals like cattle, sheep, goat, rabbit, or the birds, you are correct with this, any of these animals that you mentioned. Now, the D part, step three importance. Step three importance of specimen K, that is the catfish. What are the importance again? We have equally looked at fish farming. And the importance of fish farming are what? It's a good source of protein in human and our livestock diet. 
it is also a source of income. It is a source of re revenue to the government. It also helps in recycling of waste. We said the waste from uh, the poultry will generate maggots that will, will be source of food to our fishes in our ponds. We also said it is used to control disease. We said if the, uh, the mosquito breed their eggs inside the water body and we are able to raise fish inside those type of uh, pond, it means that the fishes can consume them. Thereby, it's not going to allow a mosquito, the life cycle of mosquito to continue. And once it doesn't continue, it means that there's no way it can trans, uh, transfer the plasmodium to the human body, which could, could cause malaria. And that's why we said fish can be a good source, of, can be used to control disease. It can also be used for research work and it can also be part of our specimen in our laboratories. And these are some of the uses we have identified when we, are, when we looked at the fish farming as a part of our lesson before the exam. Now, the, uh, now we are through with question three. We'll go ahead to question four. Now, identify specimen L, M, and N. As I've always been saying, with this, it's easy to identify. But what the examiner mark here is your spelling. Once you miss anything, a single letter, out of the name you have given, it will be marked down. So here, all you need to do is to be mindful of your spelling. And what are those specimens? They are already here. L is meat, M is milk, and N is feather. Now let's go to this. the question under it. State one farm animal, each from which specimen L, M, and N can be obtained. What are those animals that will give us uh, uh, meat, milk, and egg? So we'll pick them one after the other. Those ones that will give us the meat are the cattle, sheep, goats, birds, rabbits, and so on. Now, also be mindful here. Some of us will also play smart too. After mentioning birds, you come down and mention turkey, poultry farm, and so on. It's repetition of points. Be mindful of such type of points you raise. Now, those ones that produce milk, this way I have problem with majority of you again. I've always been telling you that it's not all the animal that will give us milk, except the female ones. And that means you must know the name of the female farm animals. So here, yeah, those animals that will give us is the cow, the awe, uh, the doe. Do, those ones will give us milk. But if you now come here and begin to tell me cattle, sheep, goats, you are being general. Because the male of cattle animal cannot give us milk. So it's only the female here that can produce milk. Now, the, the next question is, state one, one way specimen M can be made fit for, um, for human consumption. Here too, I was surprised, highly surprised, because the majority of you that you are my students are all science students. And here you cannot identify, even from junior class, they have always been telling you to make milk fit for consumption. That's what goes through what? Pasteurization. So that you kill all the germs, all the pathogens that will be inside that milk after making our farm animal. So the best way to make it fit for human consumption is to go through pasteurization process. D, state four products into which specimen M can be processed into. And M is milk, and that is asking about our dairy products. And what are they? You have the ice cream, you have the yogurt, you have the cheese, you have the butters, you have the sweets, and so some of other conventionary products. Uh, uh, all products we can get from milk after processing. Now, the D part is now asking us, there are two important of specimen, M to man, milk to man. Now. What are the importance of this milk to man? It is a good source of protein, also in our diet. 
it is a source of income for farmers who have a dairy farm. It is a source of revenue. Government can export this milk out of the country. This milk can also be processed into byproducts. And what are those byproducts? They are the dairy products we have also mentioned earlier, like the yogurt, the butter, the cheese, and so on. These are some of, we can help even process it to infant formulas, or what you, some of you write as baby foods. These are some of the importance we can derive from this particular specimen. And that brings us to the end of our practical section of our mock examination. Inshallah, by the time we'll be meeting in our next class, we also equally try and go through the theory section. I hope you will note all those essential areas I've pointed out here, which will commit errors while answering the practical question. May Allah make it easy for each and every one of you. And may Allah grant you a sound knowledge and a retentive memory. Subhanallah, we cannot desire to make us full. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.